Yes, the gas prices are high. Well, they're almost criminal at this point, and especially for us full-time RVers. What used to cost, let's say, 100 bucks to fill up our tanks is now almost double that, depending on where you are in the country. But is it really enough to drastically change our travel habits or even make some full-timers consider coming off the road temporarily? In short, we don't think so. And that's because there are so many areas a full-time RVer can save in to make up for the extra money they're spending on fuel. As a matter of fact, for most RVers, implementing just one of the things that we're going to talk about should do the trick. So stop sneaking around at night siphoning gas out of cars. It's not necessary because we're going to give you some great tips and advice on how you can offset the cost of fuel. Okay, so gas prices are high and it's really starting to eat into your budget. The good news is it won't last forever, but the bad news is it's gonna hurt while it does. So what can full-time RVers do right now to offset the cost of fuel in order to keep enjoying the lifestyle we've all come to love so much? There's a lot that you can do, and that's what this video is all about, providing you with the practical advice to make hard times a little easier. So here we go with nine things that can most definitely offset the cost of fuel. For all our fellow glampers out there, when it comes to reserving campsites, consider state and city parks because they're typically cheaper than private campgrounds or any other campground, but go for the partial hookups instead. And if you really want to go for broke, well, not literally, this video is actually meant to help you avoid going broke, but consider dry camping as well. Both partial hookups and dry camping sites are considerably cheaper than full hookups, like anywhere from two to 10 gallons of gas per night cheaper. And in some cases, it can be 100% free. This is one of those areas that can really help you recoup a big chunk of the extra money you're currently spending on fuel. If there was ever a good time to get rid of unwanted stuff in your rig and tow or towed vehicle, now is it. Why? Because the lighter everything is, the less gas it takes to move it. If you're stationary right now, why not use some of your time to lighten the load? But we should say, we don't know how many gallons of gas you'll actually save. What we do know is that you're going to save something. Besides that though, who doesn't need to declutter their RV? Y'all know who you are. Yeah, us. <laughs> That's a true statement. Whether you're a full-time RVer or not, one of the areas we all spend just too much money in is eating out. I remember long before we hit the road as full-time RVers, adding up what I was spending on dining out every month, and the amount was ridiculous. It was like $500 or somewhere around there, and that was just me. And even though I had that spending problem licked by the time we hit the road, it's not hard to fall right back into it when you're always in cities with such great food scenes. But in our defense, the well-traveled and sophisticated people always say that the best way to immerse yourself in the culture of any new place that you visit is to eat the food. And we don't want to be unsophisticated, so we eat absolutely everything. Having said that, right now would be a great time to decrease the amount of money you spend on dining out. You might just be surprised at how much you're spending and as a result, how much you can save. Absolutely. And this isn't coming from two people unwilling to take their own advice. We have a plan to cut our expenses in this category in half. I will be ordering and eating the food, but Sal will get to watch me eat it. And I will describe the taste and texture to him while I do. This way we're both still immersing ourselves into the culture, but for half the price. It's a win-win. Instead of reserving overnight campsites on the way to your destination, consider parking in any of the number of places that allow free overnight RV parking. Some of those include Walmart, Sam's Club, Cracker Barrel, Pro Bass, Cabela's, Dick's Sporting Goods, Love's Gas Stations, or Travel Centers, aka TA, or even rest stops. Keep in mind though, that you will still need to verify that overnight parking is allowed since some of these places have become a little less welcoming to us RVers, like Walmarts nowadays. But just look for the signs or call or actually go into the establishment and ask to confirm. 
Eliminating those reservations for overnight stays at RV parks while traveling from A to B will save you a ton of money. There are some fuel apps out there like Gas Buddy and Gas Guru that can help you find nearby gas stations with the cheapest prices. They're simple to download to your phone and very easy to use. And if you're anything like I was, you might not see the value in saving five or 10 cents a gallon when filling up. I didn't. I actually used to get annoyed with Sal for wanting to drive a few blocks out of our way to take advantage of a cheaper price because I didn't feel like the small amount of money we were gonna save was worth the inconvenience of going to a different gas station. I've since come around on that a little bit, primarily because we have to purchase gasoline anyway, so we might as well save something when we do. But I also realize that a lot of the money we save on a weekly, monthly, and yearly basis comes from several sources of discounts. We certainly save more in some areas than others, but every discount we take advantage of adds to the total amount of money saved and we save a lot every year. We actually have a video titled How to Save Money While Full-Time RVing that goes over the areas we save the most in. So if you're looking for more ways to save money, that's a good one to watch too. And real quick, if you guys are finding this video helpful so far, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. It helps get our videos seen by more people and it's a great way to support the time and effort we put into making them. Now back to... Another great way to reduce the price of fuel at the pump is to use a credit card that gives you cash back rewards. Just make sure that you pay off that balance before you get hit with the interest. There are also discount clubs like Sam's Club and Costco that offer discounted gas prices to its members. Keep in mind though, you do have to be a member in order to receive the fuel discounts and there's a cost for membership. So if you don't think you'll shop at one of those retailers, it might not be worth paying for the membership just to get the gas discounts. Another way to save at the pump is by signing up for grocery store discount cards, which are free. These cards give you discounts on groceries and points towards fuel rewards that can be converted into discounts at participating gas stations. Now we have the Vaughn's Discount Club card and it saved us a ton of money on gas. How many RVers have bikes that are probably on a rack attached to their RV right now and never use them. We go through phases where we won't use our bikes for months and sometimes we even forget that we have them. But when we do use them, we quickly remember how great they are to get around town. It's also an excellent way to get some exercise in. But if these reasons aren't enough to compel you to hop on those bikes, maybe the gas prices are. You'd be surprised at how much you can save if you just stop using your vehicle to get around town. This one's for all the part-time RVers or weekend warriors. Consider exploring your own backyard. Far too many people think that they have to get out of their city to find adventure, when in fact, most cities have some type of great activity, parks, trails, camping, or any number of things that many people travel far distances to see or do. So if you're a weekend warrior and the gas prices are starting to affect you at home, I'm not sure I would be willing to spend the money it's gonna take to haul an RV out of state or even in state if the destination is farther than a couple hours away. So for now, anyway, I would just find something to do locally. If you have big plans to travel across the country or just half of it, consider postponing the trip and staying in the region of the country that you're currently in. Many times RVers make cross country trips just to visit a particular city, state, or attraction. So if this is on your agenda, consider planning it for another time after gas prices come down. Those places will still be there when they do. And believe it or not, sometimes the last minute changes of the itinerary end up being some of the best decisions we ever made. Okay, so there are a few things we mentioned here that have the greatest chance of offsetting the increase in fuel prices and then some. And those are either reduce or eliminate your dining out. And this is a huge one, you all know it's true. Consider cheaper lodging accommodations or completely free ones, AKA dry camping. And don't be afraid to change your travel plans or don't make any at all right now. Being flexible with when and how you travel will save you a ton of money. But honestly, for some RVers, implementing changes in just one of these categories will most likely do the trick. 
If you guys have any other ideas or suggestions for how full-time RVers can offset the cost of fuel, please put them in the comments below so others can benefit from them. Our feelings will not be hurt. I'm sure there's a thousand more we didn't mention, and by sharing, you could potentially help others who are really feeling the impact at the pump. And on that note, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like, hit that notification button so you don't miss our next video, and subscribe to our channel. It all helps support what we're doing here. And until next time, we'll catch you down the road. Bye. Thanks for watching. Take care now.